Do you remember a couple of weeks ago, I introduced you to first the phylum core data, which taught children how to group animals by their species. Then we went into the loosely grouped terminology cards, which showed them pictures of these animals and they could recognize the features. Now we're taking it a step further. Now, if you miss these videos, I put the links in the description box and I am linking them up here for you as well so that you can watch these videos that come as a prelude to what we're doing today. Today, we are working with the specifically grouped terminology cards. That means we're going to take an animal group and we're going to learn something very specific about them. And what I'm going to be teaching my uh, niece Anna today is about birds that cannot fly. That's what we're going to be working with. She already knows about birds and what are the features that classify this creature as a bird. But now she's going to learn something very specific about uh, this group of animals. The presentation is extremely similar. It's, it's pretty much the same as what we've seen in the past. We have that for the child who can read between uh, from four to six years and of course the child who cannot read from two to four years. I'll do both of those presentations for you and then we'll talk a little bit about how we can vary this up and the different things we can do. So Anna, today I want to teach you about a special group of birds. Can you tell me how do we know that an animal is a bird? What does it have on its body? Mm, feathers. Feathers. And what does it have on its mouth? Peak. And about what else does it have to fly? It has wings. Right, okay. Now, let me show you some birds. Let me see if you know these birds. Do you know what this one is? Penguin, but can fly. Right. But it still has a peak. Do you know that it's got a very big body? It eats a lot of fish to keep it warm. And because the body is heavy and the wings are not strong enough, cannot fly so we call it a flightless bird. Can you say flightless that? Flightless bird. Right. Can you keep it on the side? Mm. Have you seen this bird before? No. We call it emu. Can you say that? Emu. An emu is a very tall bird. It's taller than you. And it cannot fly but it can run very fast. Because it's like an ostrich. It's like that. And when it cannot fly we call it flightless bird. Flightless bird. Can you keep it here? Have you seen this bird before? Peacock. Right. In it's China. Got, you've seen it? It's got such beautiful colors, isn't it? That's why it's the most famous bird in India. Oh, yes, it is. You're right. And this bird, the tail feathers are very heavy. That's why I can a fly. That's right. So That's what do we call it? A flightless bird. That's right. Have you seen this before? No, kiwi? It's a kiwi, right. It's really tiny. It's got a long beak to dig and into it, the soil. And it's really uh, fast. It is. It's, the wings are so tiny you can hardly see it. And it cannot fly, so we call it? Flightless bird. Right. And finally, do you know this? It looks like an ostrich. It's, it's very similar. We call it Rhea. Can you say that? Rhea. It's also a very tall bird. Can you see it's got long legs? Yeah. Do you see any wings? No. Because they're really small. Right, it cannot fly. So we call it flightless bird. Now I'm going to give you these pictures and let's see if you can match them, okay? Do you want to hold the cards? Okay, so today we learned about birds that cannot fly. We call them? Flightless birds. Right. So if you want to do this again, you know where it's kept. Could you help me to tidy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember last time we learned about birds that cannot fly? What do we call them? Flightless birds. Right. I want to see if you remember, okay? Do you remember this bird? Peacock. And tell me, why can it not fly? Because the wings are really heavy and it's the famous bird of India. Right. Can you keep it here? Do you remember this one? Uh, no. Um, can I give you an idea? Yeah. It's an emu. Emu. Can it fly? 
No, because you can't see the feathers. Mm -hmm. the and wings. they're really small. Okay, and so we call it? Flight with birds. And okay. these are penguins and they eat a lot of fish. Um, because they they eat a lot of fish, they can fly. The body's very heavy, right? So we call them? Flight with birds. And these are... Uh, Remember the name of this bird? Rhea. 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 Mm -hmm. Rhea is real, they you can see the feather, the wings because they're very really small. So we call it? Flight with bird. And this is a... Uh, it's got a name like a fruit. Do you remember? It starts with k. Kiwi, kiwi and it's right. really fat and it has a long beak and it has a small wing so you can't see it and it's called a fly bird. Okay, can I give you the word tags? Do you think you can read and match them? Yeah. Okay, I'd like you to read aloud. Okay, can you read this? Can you read it for me? Penguin. Can you match it? And this? Is there two there? Okay. Emu. Try it again. Emu. Mm -hmm. Rhea. Mm -hmm. Peacock. Kiwi. Okay. Let's use these cards. To check your work, make sure that everything is matched correctly, okay? Yeah. Kiwi. Peacock. Emu. Okay. Penguin. We're going to read over it just to make sure that we've done everything correct. Peacock. Emu. Penguin. Rhea. Kiwi. Okay, so today you learned again about birds that cannot fly and they're called? Flightless bird. Okay. Can you help me to tidy? Mm. Wasn't that really interesting? A very important thing to remember is that every time we do have to mention this is a bird that cannot fly and we call it a flightless bird. You've got to keep repeating that so it kind of sinks in with the child and they are able to remember this going onward. Now when we do the first presentation it's more about the Montessori guide, the directress telling the child about this animal, they may or they may not know. You can ask them questions first to see and fill in the blanks. But when we do the second presentation, here's where I want to ask her to tell me. I want to see how much she remembers. So it's not so much me telling her, but me taking the knowledge back from her and seeing how much she's learned as we've come along the way. Now, as I've said before, these materials are available from our website for you to purchase, download and start using right away. We have a few varieties that you can choose from. Um, I will add the link in the description box if you'd like to do that. Many of you may not know, but we actually have different programs for you to learn. We do have the diploma program, which of course many of you know about. But in case you just want to learn about culture, I will add the link here. You can go to that website and you can enroll in this course where you don't have any assignments to do, but you can watch videos of our team presenting materials, the whole range of culture or language or practical life or math or sensorial, whatever suits you. And you can learn at your own pace. They are videos that are very descriptive and will really help those of you who want to implement Montessori at home. You do not have to do everything. You can choose what you know is most important to you right now or what you feel really resonates with you or with your child. So I will add that link in the description box for you to visit um, in case you would like to learn more about it. Um, if you do want to know, know more about it as well, you can drop me a comment below and I'm happy to share more information with you. The amazing thing about culture is that you can keep stretching it and stretching it as far as your child's interest goes. Remember, Montessori is about following the child. We build on their interest. We help them to develop more knowledge in relation to what they're interested in. 
If you are not too sure about Follow the Child, we have a great video on that. I will link it right up here and I will also put the description, the link in the description box. So if you find your child is interested in learning about birds, we can take it further and we can teach them about birds of prey, the ones that hunt, or we can teach them about uh, birds who are herbivorous or carnivorous. There's just so many places that this can go. They can learn about uh, mammals that are aqu aquatic, like whales and dolphins um, and things like that. So you see what your child is attracted to and create materials that suit them. I'm really hoping you're gonna try this out with your children at home. And when you do, let us know how it goes. Come back, drop a, comments, a comment below, and let me know if you were successful or if you had any challenges, I can help you to solve them. So, if you've liked this video, please do hit the like button. Leave a comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you're using Montessori in your school or at home with your child. Subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.